is a quick SQL Server query that can be used to count the number of rows returned by a select query. It's useful in the type of use case when an organization wants to know how many customers placed several orders in the same month, or how many members of the sales team made several sales in a particular quarter. In these examples I'll be using the Northwind SQL Server Sample Database. It's a nice easy database to use if you're a beginner at SQL. There's a link in the description below that shows you how to install it. So here's a very basic query of the orders table. This just returns the total orders and the grouped by customer ID. So let's just run this. So as you can see, this customer here, they ordered 31 orders in total and it decreases down to 10. So there are 39 rows in total. But what if we just wanted to know the total number of customers here? So the first thing you can do is just add select at at row count as best customers. So we put that below and once we run the query, then there are two results sets here. So now we have the same results as before, but we also have a best customers results set here. So we know that there are 39 rows, so this is the number of rows returned. So this does work, but it's not really ideal because we return the original data and the other data in two results sets. So what if we could do this in a single query? So the alternative method to do this is to put the original select query inside a subquery. So you'll notice that this is the original query, although I had to remove the order by clause. And then we put that into brackets here. And then we do select count star of the inner query. So let's just run this. So now we just get one result set is the number of best customers. If you wanted to change this query, then you can just change the inner query to put a having and change this. You could also put dates if you wanted to do a specific month or something. So one really important thing about this query is that you always have to use a table alias here. Many people forget to put that, so you'll get a error, incorrect syntax near the bracket. So that will happen. If that happens, then you have to put a table alias here. This can be anything. It can be X, Y, or Z, or whatever. The other thing that people do wrong is sometimes they don't put a table alias on one of the internal columns. So as you can see, if I get rid of this, then it will complain that there is no column name here. So you always have to have column names in the internal query here. I hope you found that useful. I've actually been using SQL Server for 25 years now, but actually this is the first time I've had to do this type of query. Thanks for watching.